Welcome back to ABC Racing. On today's challenge I'll be doing Demon on Wheels and going for that gold medal, showing you how to do it, giving you your breaking reference points, going through my setup and letting you have a bit of telemetry analysis as well. So you'll be able to see how I compare against my other laps or track titan, wherever's available really after I've done it. Right, so we start this half lap challenge around Rivazza. We've got to get both corners right, but especially get a good exit out of the last corner. It was a good exit, so I've got a good run down this long straight and out to turn one, which is Tamburello. It's a sequential gearbox in this car, so all we need to do is get the shift in timing right. We want to make sure we get to the peak of the rows before shifting up. Breaking out of the 200 meter boat. Breaking a straight line, get it down into third and use both curbs on the entry to both corners on the chicane. Let it run wide, don't go too wide, and then get it back to the right hand side for the left hand curve. It's a decent straight now into the next chicane, which is Vila chicane. Breaking around 80 meters before the corner, use the inside curb of both corners. Use all of the exit curb as you come out to Vila Ooh, Oh, not quite as much of that. Break around the 50 meter board, then flick it in second gear corner, get the exit right to this, it's a long straight after. Use some of the exit curb, but don't use too much as I've noticed it before. Looking ahead for your breaking points for Piratala, it's around the 50 meter brake marker board. Brake now, get it down into third, use the inside curb, but not too much. Use the exit curb as well to get the best exit out of this corner. Oh bloody hell, not quite as much as that though. Gentle stab the brakes at 50 meters, don't use too much inside curb, it'll unstabilize the car. But then use all of the entry curb here, use a little bit of exit curb at the end of Aqua Minerale. Stay to the left hand side for the Viriante Alta chicane. Shaking my head because I know I've made so many mistakes. Break it a 50 meter brake marker board and then get it down into second. Use the all of the inside curbs on both corners. Try not to use too much exit curb. The game's a little bit unforgiving with the exit curb. There's not enough grip out there. And, oh, I've gone wide again. Really unhappy with myself. Still on though, so we need to get Rivazza right. Breaking the 100 meter breaker mark board, get it down into third. Clip the inside curb, run it wide, then get a good entry into this last corner. It's the inside curb, try to stay off the exit curb. Stay to the right hand side, minimize the steering input, get it up through the gears, don't under rev, don't over rev, just get it perfect. Get it across the line, and that's it! Another gold achievement! Oh, I thought I'd blown her again. Let's have a look at the setup and then I'll show you the telemetry. Right, with the setup I had to change quite a bit on this one. So first of all, gears. With the gears, I changed the final drive 10 slash 49. Tyres, I put them on the slicks, soft and 18 all round. With the fuel, I set it to 15, which gave me about five laps. And electronics, I lowered a little bit to two and four. The aero, I set to zero in the front and four on the rear. Alignment, minus 2.4, minus 2.4, 8, 8, 6, 6, minus 2.1, and minus 2.1. Dampers, I left pretty much as they were. Drive chain, I left as it was. Generic, was left as it was. Suspension, I've actually turned this up, I added as 50 on the front. And I increased it to 70 in the rear as well. What this does is it allows you to be a bit more aggressive over the curbs and the car won't get so unstable. And with suspension, I had the anti-roll bar set to 6, the wheel rate in the front center set to 170, the height in the front 12 and 12, the wheel rate in the rear 75, the height in the rear 43, and the anti-roll bar of 2. Right, so check in track tighten. You can see that I'm just over, just under, sorry, a second slower than the reference lap. Difference to reference. Oh, there's a massive difference there in segment five. So let's have a look at that. This is the corner where I missed the apex slightly. Run wide and then over steer at the exit. So clicking in understeer, we'll see that I understeer, we'll find out why in a bit, and then I oversteer now. Okay, so I understeer, if you look at my speed on the graph, 
I understand yeah, because I'm carrying a little bit too much speed in the. So I'm going to look at my braking. I brake a little bit later than the reference lap. My actual braking looks good. As in the curve looks good. But a little bit too much. Asking a little bit too much of the car. Not not slowing down quite in the right breaking breaking point. And they say in my racing line just because I missed that apex and then I'm out much wider there. The throttle trace, you see these little blips, that's the car automatically doing that for the gear changes. Apart from that, because I'm understeering, I'm not on the throttle as quickly as the reference lap and I have to come back off the throttle rapidly. Only a little blip because I think at that point I just went, well, if it sticks, it sticks. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Um, when I was oversteering. So that's all that we can really learn at that point. And then let's go into the next segment. Segment 7, which is the chicane at the end. Okay. So, look at my racing line. Compared to the reference lap, I've missed the apex on the first corner and I'm slightly wide on the exit to the second. So I've understeered again. Let's find out why. Braking slightly later, but it's ever so slightly there. And I'm up to full quite quickly, but I'm on the brake longer. Probably because I'm locking up. So let's look. If I scroll up just a little bit, you can see there at that point where they're coming off the brake and trail breaking it down. I'm still on the brake at that point, and look how much steering angle I've got on. So it's starting to lock up, and at that point, then I'm going to be struggling to scrub off the speed because it's locked up. If it hadn't locked up and I trail braked it down, then that would have been better. You can see the speed difference. I'm a little bit faster here. I say a little bit. It's quite quite a bit really. Um, but then you can see that gap widens as I'm locking up, as I'm understeering into that corner, making it worse and worse. And then that's when I'm struggling across that corner. My exit speed is compromised as well then. I hope you've been enjoying the videos. Please subscribe because it does motivate me to carry on doing this. Like the video, comment, let me know what it is I'm not doing so well or what you enjoy about the video. And most of all, thank you. There are a few of you watching them and I can see how many of you are subscribed. I can see how many aren't. There's quite a lot who aren't subscribed. But I can see the watch time you guys are putting in as well. A lot of you are watching it like to the end, which is just amazing. Thank you.